Um, hello, <laughs> welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions, um, a rather ad hoc session for me today. I apologize in advance. So uh, I always use alliterations uh, recently for our, <laughs> my sessions. So today's is, I can't remember, was it? Try, try three terrific things this Tuesday, something like that anyway. Um, <laughs> so I've just pulled out three things uh, that I've been looking at recently, one inspired from the previous session that we had uh, last week um, and a couple of things from my bookmarks uh, that just caused me joy. So uh, without further ado, what's the first thing I was going to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to look at uh, oh, maths, right? So we had a session on maths on Friday and the thing that came out of it was they were talking about um, like maths notation. And, and how you get students to write maths uh, and to show working and stuff. And I know that Word has a, an equation editor that you can use. So like if you're in Word, you can do insert and uh, equation and you type this equation in here. Now it's, it's all right. Like if, if you know latex, which is a kind of mathematical um, notation type of language that generally maths devotees will be able to sort of uh, fluently write in it's fine um, and you can write very complicated high end high order maths questions in that and notation um, <laughs> for, for mere mortals like me um, I find that this ink equation is is the best solution and ink equation essentially just gives you the opportunity to to write a math statement um, like uh, y Weird. Oh, this is and you know using using a, a a mouse is not the way to go here usually. Um, I I don't even know what I'm writing here. Um, equals three. And oh, you can see and there's there's a select and correct. You can you can sort of like uh, grab bits if you think that something's not right, and you can give it a different choice. In fact, the thing that was wrong here is the the B. Uh, oh, 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 I could do, it's a lasso that you're, you're meant to use. Uh, <laughs> wow, I, I am so bad at this lasso thing. Uh, there we go, B, uh, so I, I want a B. So you, you could write that and then click on insert and basically it gives you the, the notation in a nice way. And so basically if you're, if you're writing pretty complicated equations. This is quite an input editor. It, it's, it's a good input editor. It works better if you've got a, a graphics tablet or if you're writing uh, on, on a you know, touch screen or something like that because you can use your finger and it goes a lot quicker. So that, that was fine. And then somebody in the session was talking about the fact they said, why don't you use um, OneNote? Because the, the math stuff in that is really good. And I was like, well, what, what do you mean? Uh, and they're going, no, no, just try it out. So I opened up OneNote. And I have to say, like, in the past, I've looked at things, um, you know, there's these apps that you get on your phone now that uh, will solve maths for you, like Photomath. It came into, like, uh, chat rooms <laughs> a couple of years ago. You know, you could, you could basically run, uh, put pho uh, Photomath onto your, your Android or your iPhone. You could um, then take pictures of handwritten questions or questions in your textbook. And and it was <laughs> it would put it into your phone and it would basically solve <laughs> the question for you, which <laughs> opens up the possibility for my younger self to do much better in maths than I did. Um, <laughs> so so it's it's good. It's it's interesting. It's popular. I've now noticed that um, inside OneNote it does everything for you as well in a similar sort of way, um, and it and it takes it to like another level. Um, so if you're in OneNote as normal and you just choose draw. So again, I'm using my mouse, not brilliant with my mouse, I have to say, uh, but if I draw like um, simple equations, uh, so let, let's, let, what was I doing before? Um, y equals uh, three, uh, four squared uh, minus 12. Is that even a thing? It's my, my maths is not brilliant. Then you highlight the section that you've done um, and you click on this math symbol. And when you do that, uh, it, it gives you these options at the bottom. 
Um, so it's, it's converted to yourself. You could ink to math, just puts it into normal text. But these selects for actions say things like uh, solve for y. So it gives you, gives you the answer um, that you have, which is fair enough. But then you've also got these things for uh, show how you solved it. Now, and it, it gives you an immersive reader as well. So you can, you can, you know, when you put it into immersive reader and depending how you've set it up, you can get it to read out to you and explain how you've just solved this problem, um, which is awesome. Plus, you just you, you can drop them in to your your OneNote if you just want to have it uh, inside as an explanation if you're writing stuff up, um, which is which just seems brilliant too. Um, and on top of all of that, um, it has this thing about so if you've written in some kind of equation, you can also generate your own quiz. So when you click on generate your own quiz, it basically goes into Microsoft Forms, looks at the format of the kind of question that you've asked. Um, oh, I have to sign in. Uh, it, and asks you, like, how many questions do you want to make? Uh, just a couple. Um, generate the quiz. And it, it drops the quiz basically into your page. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. It's just a, a multiple choice question. Um, and it was designed not for teachers to do this, to set up questions, but it was designed for uh, students to do it themselves. Because when you collect them and you submit, you can view the results and you can see what's right and what's wrong. Um, and you can even put these formula back into OneNote and get math to solve it and teach you like what the steps were. So that if you want to go back and see what you got wrong and how to get it right. And like the math equations are pretty, pretty impressive. Has, has anyone heard of um, what, when we were talking about maths as well, I was like, oh look, you can do all these things with it. Um, <laughs> you know, I was getting a bit too excited by the whole thing. Um, I also had uh, stuff like, uh, let's see, what else could you do? You can put in graphs as well. Um, it's a bunch of additional graph points you could put in if you want to add in extra information on that. If you type in, in fact, if you type in um, more, more complicated sort of things, uh, let's see if I delete that. Uh, has anyone ever used this stuff? Because it's, it's pretty, it's it, like for me, I mean, I was aware of, of like the equation editor uh, and inking editors. But uh, to be honest, it, for me, it was, um, it was more of a, it was pretty dodgy before. Like it wouldn't recognize stuff uh, very easily. Um, and you had to have a few goes, but the, now the recognition, I suppose, of, of your writing is, is so much better. <laughs> He says, as he can't write a B, look at that. That's brilliant. Uh, if, if, fix it. There we go. Look at that. Fix it. And it's just worked out uh, which bit that it wants. So I want, I want to do that bit. Uh, I, want, I want that bit. What is it? Oh, it's a B. There we go. Ah, right. And select an action. So like if you graph it, it does this thing that other maths editors do or equation editors, uh, like popular ones that are used in schools, high schools and colleges is, is something called Desmos or GeoGebra. So like you, you've got, um, you know, graphs that you can manipulate if you want to get a specific angle and you could, you could like highlight single points on it as well and, and then just drop it into OneNote. So it's, it's a, <laughs> the tools are coming in to OneNote pretty impressive like I, I honestly I'd, I'd never seen anything like this um like taking it this far the only thing about it is if i was using it for instruction i'd be a bit worried about the point the fact that students could basically get the answers to all of the equations <laughs> that i could put in it it's kind of like you know when my kids look at me when i i'm doing like the the homeschooling and maths with them they go but dad can i not just use the calculator or or more often, Dad, can I not just ask Siri? Siri knows everything. Um, so there you go. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So what was the so one note? Honestly, go away and play with it. It, it just seems awesome to me. <laughs> Kenji, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, well, in, in life sciences where we're getting students to practice kind of unit conversions and and, yeah. and working out molarity and concentration and things like that. Staff could use this as a way of generating quiz questions for Moodle. Absolutely. 
Um, I mean, you, cause you, if you can embed it, if you embed it into middle, yeah, you can generate all of these quiz questions through that. I mean, it does matrices. It does, you know, the, the level of, um, algebraic expression and, and graphs that they can deal with is, is really impressive. It's pretty deep. It doesn't do everything, I have to say, but you are talking about my kind of limited maths ability here. Um, right, so uh, what else was I going to talk about? Uh, oh, accessibility, right. So accessibility is kind of like coming to the fore just now because, you know, we're, we're all running up against this, um, uh, what am I going to say? We're going to run up against the public sector bodies, web accessibility and mobile applications, accessibility regulations. So that comes up in September the 23rd. So everyone's kind of looking at, um, you know, how do we make things accessible or check to see if they're uh, accessible? Um, this is my shout out to the world. Um, and then if I was writing in Word, um, I know that if I review, I've got this thing about check accessibility. Um, and I can check to see that uh, what I've written is accessible. Like obviously I should have started off with a slightly more complicated program. So in Word, it's pretty easy. Like it, it's, and it's pretty good in the sense that essentially it comes down here with a list of problems that you might have. So let's choose, let's choose a document that definitely has more problems. So here's, here's a PowerPoint I wrote because the accessibility checker works across the kind of office suite. Um, and I, I wrote this a while ago. Uh, and I went back and I, I've never checked my PowerPoints for accessibility. And I realized that a lot of people when they're teaching, they just pass on their slides after a session if they haven't recorded it. So <laughs> I wanted to review it and to see what, what, what was my accessibility like? And, and obviously um, I haven't edited this, but I did have a few errors. So basically um, in the accessibility report, when you run the accessibility checker, uh, what, what it does is it, it separates it into two kind of categories. The errors bit is, is really where it goes like you should really do something about this because anyone using a screen reader, anyone with like, you know, some level of, of, of barrier towards accessing content is going to get tripped up by some of this stuff. Um, and I was looking at like how it tells you what to do and what it is. So this is missing alternative text. So if I jump, it'll tell me like, <laughs> it'll tell me, uh, right. It's, it's missing alternative text. Why would I fix it? Alternative text or shapes can describe the shape to someone who can't see the screen. Steps to fix and how to fix it. Right click the object and select edit alt text. Now in this case, all I've done is I've dropped a, a shape in here, which is an empty box holder. So I didn't even know it was there. So I can just sort of delete it and it takes off the list of the things that I've done. Equally, when I jump into things like, so here's Twitter, and this is, this is realistically, I've just missed out the, the, the text. And so uh, like, how, do, how do I add uh, edit text to it? So steps to fix, right click the object and select edit alt text, which is, which is awesome because it then, you know, it actually tells you what you're meant to do. Um, and so in here, I could possibly use, uh, I could give it, you know, either Twitter logo, but as I know that the Twitter logo is just kind of decorative, it doesn't really add anything to the, the context of, of my slide. I can just mark as decorative. And all that does is it tells the screen reader to like skip over that image because it, all it's doing is make the page look pretty. <clears throat> or not pretty, I don't know. Um, there, was, there was stuff that I then struggled with because uh, I, so I found this, like I haven't touched them or fixed them. Um, it said, uh, all right, okay. So here is a missing slide title. So I know that when I made up these slides and I get obsessed about like lining things up and making things nice text sizes and stuff, it's, it's you know, some kind of OCD family curse nonsense thing in my head. So this is just a regular text box and it's not a, a slide title. And I, I sat there like trying to work out, okay, well, I'll just, I'll change this text box into a, a title box and like, <laughs> <laughs> could, could I work out how to do it? Does anyone here know how to do that? You use the auto layout, you change the layout to the title slide, and then you, you have to copy and paste the text. Yes, that's, that literally when I was just messing about with it, when I was, so I had to go into view, I had to go into slide master, and then I was going to change the layout of it. 
which is a pain because obviously I've, I've set it up. And then it says, then, but then I was looking at it here, I was like, oh, how do, you, how do you change it? And it says, choose the add slide command from the drop down in the accessibility checker and type a unique description uh, for the slide. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, so I can, this is a quick fix. <laughs> so I immediately rush, rush, you know, in, in my terms. And I was like, check accessibility, drop down arrow. I was like, drop down. Where's the drop down? Couldn't work it out. It took me a few minutes. When I say a few minutes, like 30 minutes um, <laughs> to work out that it's in this sort of uh, error list. When you drop the drop down arrow, it actually gives you an option to just drop it straight into the thing. So you, you get like a, a, a thing that you can just type in, you know, Flipgrid. Uh, oops, it's hard to spell when I'm writing over something. Um, but it's, it's, it's kind of like, I never knew that. I never knew you could just drop in extra elements because you can't do it easily otherwise. Um, and it, and it, once you solve a problem, it drops it, takes it out the list. And for somebody who is, again, with the OCD thing, you know, as you're just like clicking off these errors, it, it was starting to make me feel a bit good, I have to say. Like I, was, <laughs> I was going, oh, I, mean, <laughs> I was getting quite, I was quite carried away with them. Um, fixing all these things uh, as I was going through them. Now, I, I just want to say about accessibility, I'm going to hold up my hand and say, like when it comes to accessibility and, and dealing with accessible issues, uh, I, although I, I, I talk about it now and I pretend that, um, you know, I was doing more, more with it now than I used to, accessibility was always an afterthought for me. It, <laughs> I mean, I, would, I, I, I think of myself as a nice guy, um, but it's literally if I had time or I would go back and fix something if someone had raised a problem. I genu genuinely just never bothered doing it at the time that I was making things. It was never um, in, in my head, like as, as, a, as a priority, I, I should say. And the only time that that's changed for me, um, <laughs> which is a really unfortunate story, is that um, I made friends with this guy who was blind. Actually, I, I, made, I made a closer relationship with his guide dog, who was awesome. But um, <laughs> after hanging out with them for a while and traveling with them down to um, some events, honestly, I just, and he showed me how he used a screen reader and the speed that a screen reader reads back to him. If you, if you ever have a blind person or you know of a blind person or somebody who uses a screen reader regularly, just listen to the speed that they listen to the playback of a screen reader. It will blow your mind. It's just like, it's like four times speed and the amount of information they can take in is amazing. Um, <laughs> but it was only after hanging around with them for a while that I it, it became more of a conscious thing for me. And every time I saw something, I, I, I would pay more attention to, to accessible issues. So I, <laughs> I'm not gonna throw any stones uh, now that I live in a glass house. Um, right, okay, so accessibility. It's just, you know, have a look at it. Oh, the only, the only other thing I would say is, um, please people at CDN, forgive me for doing this. Uh, or or I, don't, I don't have to do this, but um, there's a thing, like because of this, the, how, how do you check that your content online is reasonable? Uh, oops, sorry, I just stopped my share. Uh, let me just share again. Um, so one, one aspect of that is where the accessibility regulations are pretty tough. They, they enforce this sort of rating called WCAG 2.0 AA standard, which is just like gobbledygook to most people. Um, and when I was designing my website, uh, this page on our CDN website, I had to change loads of things to try and make it compliant. But to check uh, whether it was compliant or not, I used this tool called the, the WAVE Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. So it's a plugin for Firefox or Chrome. Um, and generally, it's plugins for your browser, oddly enough, don't tend to be controlled by your institution. You, you tend to have a free hand at it. Don't tell anyone. Right? It's a secret. Otherwise, they'll lock it down and I'll never get to use half the stuff that I do. Um, but in this wave accessibility tool, if you, if you go to a website, um, and I'll just go to the CDN one, and I should say that we are sort of working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say it up ahead. And I, if I click on web accessibility, it basically looks at my page and just tells me what's right and what's wrong. And it, it picks up any errors. And, and again, it will go into the, the, the details if you want. So for example, very low contrast. Contrast is, is just an issue that's coming up. It's saying that that light gray 
is is not sufficient contrast against the white background and it's a really quick way of you looking at um, a website just to check to see if everything's on scratch and if it's not then you can just knock the door of your web dev team or your your IT team and get them to sort it out. Can um, I ask a quick question? Yeah 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 no. Um, do you think that will work with a Moodle page? <laughs> see all right. <laughs> right right okay so so let's 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 just see because um uh, I'm an admin for our middle. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let me jump onto. Well, I'll, I'll put it onto one of the courses I set up. So um, like, so this is. Uh, should I just? I'll switch it to um, a learner view, just to just to get the experience of what that would be. Right. So here's the front page of uh, um, a data science course, which is free to join, by the way. Um, <clears throat> Though I'm a bit behind on it. Uh, let's see, where's my web accessibility? So basically, it should take any page and it will feed back on it and it will raise the issues. Now, you, bear in mind that we'll come up with things that are alerts that generally are just kind of warnings or advice. Um, and it won't, you have to kind of go through it to see exactly what is a real issue and what's not a real issue. This looks a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> than it really is. Most of the stuff is in green here. Um, there's certain things about scripting in the background, ARIA comments, that it's, it's, it's bad, but not, not terrible at times. I've, I've got low contrast. I didn't think I had low contrast. Um, <laughs> I've got so many errors, I don't know what it is. Question is, it'll work on any web page. It's, it's worth a quick go. Like if you play around with it a while, you'll get familiar with exactly um, how it works and what to ignore and it's quick. And, and generally when you're talking about auditing uh, a website or um, some kind of online instance, you're talking about sampling a few sites, a few pages, and then just trying to find some common errors across your, your navigation or your interface or whatever and solving those. And that wipes out like a large percentage of the errors you'll get all around. Um, yes, the, the yeah. answer is it does work on middle and it's, yeah. Kenji, if you, if you open a middle book, does it work on the middle book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, it, yeah. It basically, I mean, it'll work on, on anything. So if I, if I go with my, I don't even know what the data science overview is. Oh, that's not a good one. Uh, something with a bit more text, well, less text, more text, text and pictures. Oh, there's, there's something with stuff on it, right? So if I throw it onto that, yeah, because it's a web page, it'll yeah. lift anything. So, so this, this, this is a header. So I've put a blank space to create some space between these two paragraphs and I've used a header tag to it but I shouldn't have I just should have created a space and it's thrown up that error same thing as I did there and that was probably me just playing around with layout but it throws off a screen reader so it's stuff like that I can go back to and and check so it it I mean it's useful it is sometimes a bit overwhelming <laughs> the first time you run it um right nobody at CDN look watch this video I'll fix it by the time by the time you check these sites again. Uh, right. So sorry. Last few minutes. So like. So I've left the best to last. Like literally, you've come and joined me. You you sort of had to sit through the whole mass thing and and sit through the the accessibility thing, which is really important, by the way. But um, totally the best thing ever. And because the only six of you have sort of like come in for me today, um, I shouldn't say that for the recording. I should say all 37 of you who have joined us today. Um, <laughs> have any of you seen Loopy? Like this is like, I've, I've had this in my, <laughs> my, my bookmarks for years. And, and it was designed by a guy called Nick Case, who does like a ton of these kind of interactive things online. He's, he's a web developer, just really clever, pulls together stuff. This is just awesome. I love this. And you can, if you ever want to show somebody the power of an interactive whiteboard, just, just to impress the hell out of them, um, I, I, I would start off with this. So Loopy, basically by Nick Case, is a simple kind of tool that allows you to draw, generally with your hand or pen, onto a whiteboard. And it creates uh, an interactive process a, a kind of animated moving process on the screen for you in real time. Um, and you can design really complicated interactions with it to explain processes in a really visual way. And it is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> now, the only thing is, it's, it's, it is limited. There's only a certain number of functions to it. So it can't do everything for you. But for 
for certain contexts, I love this thing. Right, so um, if I make a model from scratch, basically this is what you start with. You start with a pen tool. Imagine if I was using my finger with a pen tool. Um, in this case, I've got two sort of nodes um, and I, I want to show that this node does something. So when I play it, basically, I've got pathways between the nodes. What I can do is start the process by firing off a trigger. And it basically creates some kind of process motion uh, with whatever's drawn on screen. Now I can, I can add to that. So if I want to draw another node, I draw a really bad circle. Um, I, oh, I have to move your faces, sorry. Uh, I give that node a name, uh, <laughs> something else, uh, another thing. Uh, well, let's leave it bread. I can, I can make it empty. Uh, if I want to connect to it, I can connect a line to it. Um, I can indicate whether this action uh, removes as a minus sign or adds uh, from, from the source that I have. Uh, I can draw, if I draw a short line, um, it, will, it will take relatively short time for the thing from here to move to there. Um, however, if I make the length longer, it'll take longer and it'll indicate how quickly certain processes will feed up and feed back. So, so you can get some simulate, uh, quick models or, or, or some complicated models out of this. Um, right, so if I play here uh, and start off something, you can see how it starts feeding in more processes. Uh, so the, the cool thing about this is though, um, once you've created a model, you can save it, load it, you can embed it on your website as well. So if I load a model, oh, and it's got some cool examples in there as well, I can load a file. So here's one I created uh, earlier, positive progress, loopy. Um, <laughs> and this was based on uh, a sample file that they started with. In fact, I'll show you the sample file. Um, let's leave that. Uh, here's a automated automation and job loss. So this is like an example that they set up. And they say, if you, play it and run it, um, it basically explains this process of what happens when automation uh, comes on the scene. Um, you know, what kind of effect does it have on the, the larger society? Um, and, and you're given like a task to work out how can you solve these problems of political unrest, frustration and job loss. So it, it takes you through a process, uh, you, you might talk through it with students um, in real time. So tax revenue, I think what I did uh, in my example was I said tax net revenue might lead towards education. Uh, education starts off low. Um, let's change the color to, uh, I don't know, um, purple, okay. Um, tax revenue feeds into education. Uh, education then, oh, automation. Automation might add lead into new jobs. Uh, so automation might, might feed that process. Um, education will create new jobs. Uh, and, and new jobs will feed, uh, decrease job loss because, um, let's see, make it less. Uh, and then you play the process, start off, automation begins. And how, how might that model uh, increase over time? I, I swear, like the stuff that you can come up with this, like the, the kind of discussions and talks, um, it's just, I, I love that. I, I, I like, <laughs> like, you can't believe the kind of things you can do. I, I struggle to do things with an interactive whiteboard at times beyond just writing an annotation. The fact that you can get like free tools like this just, I, I just, it, it makes me smile, <clears throat> which I do a lot. <laughs> so, and, and the thing is like where, where you see on this right hand side, it gives you options to like, you know, you could save the model that you've created. You can embed it into like your, your VLE, your pages. Um, you can actually save the models that you create and load them in later on. You can get your students to create process answers to problems that you put up and, and get them to think creatively about them. Um, it's a really easy to manipulate. All you're doing is you can act, 
add uh, text labels to it. You know. the, the thing about text labels is that you don't have any formatting at all. So this is text, so you have no bold, um, you have no um, formatting sort of options. The only thing you can do is this is text and it, it just goes on and on and on. So the only thing I learned is that, you know, if you put in line breaks, so if you press uh, what shift and enter, um, you, you, can, you can create shorter bits of text and fit them on screen. That's basically the only tip you need. Uh, if you're adding a, a title, maybe, um, so what goes here, it's not a, a terribly accessible thing to do. You can't change font size. Um, you could just use capitals, I suppose. Uh, typically, writing in capitals is not a good thing. Uh, um, but, um, you know, to make it stand out, I think if it's a, a limited title, you, you could get away with it. Okay, so that's... Just to change it, it doesn't pick up any simple HTML tags. Um, oh, try and add some formatting. So I should type strong um, just yeah. to add, uh, but because of time oh, and the fact that nice. lazy, just type uh -huh. it. All, all it does is take it directly. So I'd yeah. thought originally I could add in some HTML, but to be honest, that probably goes... If I had to tell my lecturers that you <laughs> you could write HTML, some would take advantage of it, but you know others it would just be another confusion. Um, it is limited in some ways, but in other ways, the fact that it's pretty limited, the fact that you can just you know mess about with it and, and come up with some really interesting ideas as models, um, and then and put those forward, it's just. I, I, it just opens up possibilities and I, and I get excited by it. Right, sorry, right. Um, so that was my, my, my brief sort of thing, three things, <laughs> and that's 30 minutes. Um, does anyone have any questions, I should say, about anything that we've written today? So we've covered today a bit maths, maths notation, how to use OneNote, some of the facilities to calculate from that, accessibility things, using accessibility checker in, in Microsoft Office products, essentially, but also the, the Wave Chrome plugin, which allows you to scan a website or any online site um, uh, for, for accessibility issues related to the public sector body web. I'm never going to say that. P-E-S. Somebody come up with a good acronym that I can say quickly for that. Uh, and the last thing was Loopy. Loopy. Loopy, which is awesome. In fact, it's... I'll, I'll come in with a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> So uh, going back to the first one with the stuff you were doing with one note and equations, that's amazing, yeah. but it, it, it raises a question. It used to be you could say to the students, you know, go, what's the answer? And they would say 35 and you say, no, 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 you have to show me the working. Now the computer <laughs> will actually provide that working for them. How can we, is there any way that we can test students remotely as technology becomes more and more enabling of uh, a cheater? Uh, Okay, yeah. I mean, so the one thing about OneNote, the fact that you can, you can get the steps and you can get solutions explained to you, I think is good in a, in a kind of remote working sense and as more blended learning goes on. So if, if students are going to be remote from their teachers, ideally you'd want a teacher to explain the steps to solve an equation or whatever. But if you've got that facility to hand, then that's a useful tool. So I, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't use it for testing or assignments <laughs> because that obviously comes with its own problems. Um, there was a previous session that I ran, I think three, three tips or something for a Thursday rather than a Tuesday. In that, um, I showed a, a, a shareable whiteboard tool that all students could use at the same time. Um, so a teacher could ask them to uh, ask a question, show me some working, and the teacher sees every screen on a private screen themselves, and they can see all the students do the working of a problem uh, in real time. Um, if you want to see it, just just go have a look at the other session. Um, three tips for uh, Thursday. I'll put a link into it. But the, the basic tool was called uh, whiteboard.fi, and it was um, developed out of a project from Finland, uh, mm -hmm. which was another national big maths project, which was, was is excellent. It's absolutely stunning. Um, right. Well, time for one more question. Something something challenging, something hard. I feel James has got one. You can see it. I, I can see it in his face. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you could send the link to your uh, data science um, uh, Blackboard site or your Moodle site, sorry. 
Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly, I'm literally sitting on a computer writing stuff on the course that you're doing, which is very similar this morning. And I thought, wow, what a time saver. I'll have a look at what you've got as well. I um, definitely will. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, that, that's probably all we have time for in this recorded part of the Virtual Bridge session. But if you have time, you know, just come join us any Tuesday or Friday uh, morning at 11 a.m. You can sign up on the CDN site or, or just, just tap Owen or me or Jason or somebody on the shoulder and we'll send you some joining links. But until then, <laughs> take care and stay safe. Thanks for joining us.